Hello everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcome you to episode 13 of Let's Play Zelda 2. And last time we finished off with the fifth palace, and now we're gonna get into a battle with these guys. I hate these guys. I could take them out with fire, I guess, right now, but I, I kinda just wanna get out of here. Move on with other greater things, you know. Like moving down here to the sixth palace, or more towards the sixth palace, anyhow. Uh, nice. Yeah, so, uh, we have the river devil down here. Looks oddly like a spider. But if you play the whistle for him like that, then you can, uh, pass by. And he's not really that much of an issue. I always hated the look of the river devil just because he does look like a spider, and I'm not the biggest fan of spiders. Not after my whole Black Widow experience that I had in... that I talked about in that one Majora's Mask video. What was it called? It was called Great Golden Gridiron or something, I think. Which was a really stupid name for that episode, but whatever. It's done now. It's done engraved in stone on YouTube. Alright, these areas like this with the big fence, they kind of remind me of Toy Story. I don't know why. And uh, you got to be kind of careful in them. Basically, if you see one of those rocks that's about to hit you, like if you can normally tell like if, you're, if you keep walking forward that it'll hit you. Uh, then, when, t when you see that, you either want to stop or back up or something, and generally you can avoid them, play a nice little game of dodgeball, dodge rock, dodge rock. And you should be just fine. Really, the only time that this gets a little bit annoying is when you have to actually, like, face off against the enemy at the same time, just like this. But if you can kill the enemy fast enough, if you even want to kill the enemy, which I kind of do because I need the experience because I'm a little bit underleveled, believe it or not. I probably should have at least one more level than I do right now, but I don't actually I actually don't know how that happened. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, you can also jump over them if they're coming at you at a specific angle. It's really hard to like describe, you just kinda ha gotta kinda have a feel for it. And after you do it a few times you will have a feel for it, trust me. Alright, these are weird. For some reason the hard encounters, like the big Ganon type monsters that you run into in this area. They're actually easier than the little than the easy encounters. I don't know why. They're both pretty much the same, except one, like the easy one, is has those. Uh, what am I doing? One cast life. That's right. The easy one has those these eyeballs, these guys in it, along with those birds. And the hard ones have octoroks in them. And personally, I don't know. That just might just be me that thinks that these guys are harder than octoroks, but whatever. It's their design, I don't know. They have some weird design in this game. Like, those alligator dudes, the ones who are fighting in the fence areas, there's actually a tougher version of those. There's a red version, there's also a blue version way later on. But the red version, it's harder to take down than the orange one, but it gives 50 less experience, which is so weird. I'm not sure why that is. It might be just a bug in the programming for all I know, but... Alright, I'm gonna die here from... I'm just being a jackass, I don't know what I'm doing. Might, it might be a little bit because I'm sick still, but that's really no excuse. I'm sick, I shouldn't even be recording, I guess, but what can I say? I miss this too much. I miss recording too much. Can I please kill this guy? <laughs> Thank you. And that's actually going to be really useful, that red jar. Okay, yeah, so uh, we've only got one heart container and one magic jar to find, and the last heart container is pr we're probably going to get it like right pretty soon here. Also, this area that we're in right now, it's, it's kind of weird. There's like two ways to go around to get to the other side. There was a bridge down there, and that's like the fast way, but it's also, it's like I hate that bridge. I could, you can die really easily on that bridge, so I would be very careful if you take that route. I like to go around the long way here, mostly because it's just easier to deal with, just because, and you can get more experience too, especially, like, even here, like, I should bring this up, uh, this forest is actually really great for grinding in, because the easy encounters have those guys that give 150 experience, and, uh, the hard encounters have the red versions of those guys that give 100 experience, but it's still really good. So you can just stick around here and grind for a little bit if you feel the, ne if you feel the necessity to. Feel the necessity to. That's such a weird way of phrasing things. Ah, oh, well. And there's actually another. There's like a little Stonehenge type area. Yeah, right here. And this is where the red guys come into play. Really, the strategy for these guys is like wait until you see their thing on the back swing like that. And that's when you want to hit them. Because then they'll swing it while they're far away from you. And they won't actually hit you. That's what I like to do, anyways. That's what I've found to be best against them. 
Oh, I haven't talked to you guys in forever. It feels so weird. I don't know. Alright, so your last target container is... I thought it was right there, but... I might be, or maybe that guy just encountered me before I could actually land on the square. I don't know. Because it's not down there. It should be... Okay, it's one up. I never remember the exact location, but there it is on that one coastal area. You know, because my balls have an effect on the tides of the ocean. What? Alright, yeah. And you can see that these red dudes, they do... They, they'll give you a hundred experience like I was talking about before. Alright, oh god. If there's one coming up from you on both sides, then you really... You're pretty much a sitting duck at that point, because you're going to get hit regardless of what you do. There's no way you can block them on both sides. The red, the blue variations of these guys are like even worse, because they actually throw their weapon. And I really hate trying to take them down, but for the sake of the LP, I'm going to have to face them eventually, I guess. Didn't I have 2805 experience like three encounters ago and I still have it now, even though I've defeated like so many enemies since? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Alright, yeah, so this cave should lead us to our next town. I'm being so boring today, what's wrong with me? Oh. Uh... Yeah, the next town is actually a kind of hidden. There, like, you might have been able to, when we were passing by that bridge that I was talking about before, you could probably see a town off to the bottom of the screen. That's not the town you want to go to, because that town is actually, like, basically it's abandoned, and if you go there now, then there's going to be invisible enemies that will, that will just kick your ass. So you really want to be careful if you go there. You can go there, I guess. There's only one thing for you there. But there's, we're going to pick up a, the cross in the sixth house, and that'll actually let you see those enemies. So... I would recommend doing that before actually heading there. But the, the town you actually want to head to is where the inhabitants of that first town actually fled to. And it's going to be right here, hidden in the forest. Very conspicuous. Well, if I could unlock it, please. Alrighty. And this sounds actually really cool. I kind of like it. I don't know. It's just it just feels a little bit different. No, don't play the whistle. You gotta knock it down with your hammer, and there it is. I don't know how. I think there's an NPC or something that'll tell you about that. But here we have the hidden town of Kasuto. Well, for for a minute, I remembered it being Kabuto, but no, that's a Pokemon. Uh, I think this lady will have something for us. Uh, yes, I do deserve your help. Damn right, I do. Did you, have you seen how much I've been through? How much toil and hard shit I've been through trying to get here? Actually, I want to talk to her. Just because she might say something of some importance. Uh, a secret edge of town. What is this, Final Fantasy IV? It's great grammar there. But here's your last magic container. It's really, it's really easy to... Wait, what was I going to say there? I was about to say it's really easy to miss, but no, it's actually really hard to miss. Even if you don't know, even if you don't have the first clue what you're doing, you should know by this point to talk to people when they come out of their houses like that. And just as a result of that, you should find that very easily. The old man who remains has magic. Yeah, she's talking about the actual abandoned town of Kasuto with the invisible enemies and whatnot. Uh, no, I can actually utilize this. I can cast life, so I'm full on life, and heal my magic. That way, I don't have to visit both of them. There's a life lady if you need her, though. Alright, and if you head into this house, actually, this is a little bit weird. Uh, you head in here, and it's, like, a really big house. But you head in the chimney, and way in the back of the chimney, you will find your magic fellow. Who will give you the spell. That's literally what it's called. It's called spell. They really could have come up with something cool, or something like, maybe, I don't know, unveil or something. I really have no idea. But the spell, it's kind of weird how it works, this spell. Basically, uh, it's only used for one thing, and that's the secret at edge of town. But if you use it in those areas where, you know where you had the I'm actually going to talk to this guy, because I'm pretty sure he has something vital to say. Call for help at the Three-Eye Rock. That's your clue to how to access uh, the Sixth Palace. Alright, and if you, uh... I think you want to play it right here. Actually, it doesn't matter where you cast the spell, because... Regardless, you're going to have this big old tower that appears with the biggest door in the history of anything. It's like, what is... Th <laughs> Who's ever going to need that leader? I don't know. But if you come in here, you get the 
you get the Lion's Park Key. I know it's called the Magical Key, and it basically allows you to open any locked door without the need of a small key, so you don't have to go gallivanting around looking for those anymore. I call it the Lion's Park Key, though. And it's because there's this really, like, convoluted story behind it. But actually, way back when I was, like, young and I still lived in Canmore, which was, like, back in grade 2 or 1 or something, I had this friend. I had this friend named Jack Long. And he had his brothers, like, Liam and, uh, William, I think. And he actually owned this game, surprisingly. So that was actually technically my first encounter with this game. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go heal my magic really quick. Just because I want to be full on everything, because you gotta keep your wits about you in this area, because it's a little bit tough. Yeah, but he had this game, and uh, one day I was over at his house, and we were, like, all playing it, trying to get through. And he was actually, like, getting to this town right here. I don't know how he got this far. He must have been really good at this game or something. Especially, like, he was so young. He was, like, only in grade 3 at the time. He was a little bit older than me, but... Anyways, he got there, and he was, like, about to give me a turn to play, because I had been, like, dying to play it for so long, for, like, two hours or something. And, uh, when I actually got my chance, that's when his mom came in and told us that we had to go outside and play for a little bit. So we went to Lions Park. And there, I still wanted to, like, play the game, but I couldn't, because the NES was at his house, obviously. So I j so we just, like, pretended that we were playing the game. And so I went to the house, and I got the key, and all, or I pretended to get the key. We used, like, uh, what do we use for the key? Shoot, we used, like... Like, one of us, ha like, I think his brother Liam had, like, a necklace or a pendant or something, and he we used that as the key. So I held it up all victoriously with both hands, and I was, I, that was so stupid. I'll never forget that, though. That's sort of one of the most, that's a really fond memory I have, but it also makes me realize how much of a little derp I was as a kid. Alright, I want to get this guy, please? Thank you. God, that's so weird. The Lion's Park key. I wonder if Lions Park is still- I'll have to go back to Canmore someday and uh, see if I can go there. Because that was actually a really fun place. They had a tennis court and everything. It's really great. Anyways, now back to the game at hand, I guess. Got a little bit sidetracked, I guess. So much nostalgia. But, uh, yeah, the six- there's really nothing else to do. We have all our heart containers, all our magic containers. And we have all but one of our spells. So all we have to do is uh, go to the Six Palace. And that one dude said, call for help at 3 Eye Rock. That's basically your clue to play the whistle in the middle there. And that'll unveil the sixth and final palace. Well, I say final. Take that with a grain of salt, I guess. 